Hey you guys, what's up? Hope you're doing well. I'm out here on a beautiful morning in nature right by a wooded river and it is exciting because Sigma sent me their new 150 to 600 millimeter sports lens that they just released recently for L mount and E mount and it is amazing because currently there are no other better native options unless you spend $12,000 or more and this lens is worth $1,500. It's an amazing lens and I am so excited to tell you guys about why I love it so much. So why is that? Why do I love this lens so much? Well, if you're a Sony E-mount user, currently you have a 500 millimeter, $12,000 lens available, which is, which is great, which is phenomenal, right? But that's $12,000 and most people don't have that type of budget. So the next step down is currently the Sony 200 to 600 millimeter coming in at $2,000. This lens comes in at $1,500 and is better than that Sony 200 to 600 in my opinion in lots of different ways. So one of the first big features about this lens that I love is the four stops of image stabilization. Now this is awesome because most lenses of this type of length that are telephoto lenses come in somewhere around two to three stops of image stabilization. However, this one has four. So it feels very nice, pretty smooth as you're holding it handheld. Yesterday, I got to test it out with some acorn woodpeckers in my area, and I was pleased with the results of just being able to hand hold this at 600 millimeters and still keep the footage this steady. With some post stabilization, usually this is super, super nice. And this footage looks great because of how great the image stabilization is on this lens. Now, next, let's talk about the minimum focusing distance because Although we like to pretend like that doesn't matter a lot with lenses, I actually have had a few scenarios where wildlife has literally come up within five feet of me or even closer in a few scenarios. Off the top of my head, I can think about this one encounter that I had with American Pippet in which a swamp, it just walked up right to my camera lens and got below my minimum focusing distance with one of my old lenses. So one of the awesome things about this lens is that when you're fully zoomed out at 150 millimeters, it is literally, the minimum focusing distance is literally right in front of your camera lens. It's amazing how close you can get to wildlife. You can see in this example that I kept thinking I was, I was getting too close, I was getting too close, but I just kept having to creep up closer and closer to this leaf just to show you guys an example of how close the minimum focusing gets on this lens. It's quite incredible. So in wildlife photography, it's important because occasionally, although it's rare, those situations do come up. And with this lens being able to focus so close, it's really handy for those versatile scenarios. Whereas the Sony 200 to 600 millimeter has a minimum focusing range of seven feet, which multiple times I've had wildlife come within seven feet of me. So it really sucks when you have such a beautiful, joyous encounter with wildlife so close and you're not even able to capture it because your lens isn't outfitted for it correctly. So I really like that about this lens. Something else that I really love about this lens is the lens hood and the lens cover it comes with. It comes with a normal, you know, um, I don't know what that's called, a snap-on lens cover, but it also comes with a soft cover which fits really nicely over the lens hood and is really practical because sometimes it gets really annoying just dealing with that, you know, lens cover just constantly falling off or popping off or finding a place to store it because it's a hard piece of plastic. But with this lens hood, it's really convenient. Just slaps right on there, comes right off, and you can store it pretty much anywhere. I really like the soft cover that this comes with. It's a really cool bonus about this lens. Also, this lens hood is great. I've gotten so tired of screw-on lens hoods over the years, and it's really awesome that with this lens hood, you can just simply unscrew this little thing, flip it around, and then all you're doing is just screwing it right back on. And it's so much more convenient and easy and you're not risking it breaking so easily as you're twisting it around on it. And I love that, especially when you're going through different humidity levels or temperature levels, I found that sometimes those screw-ons are hard to get off. So I really appreciate that about having a lens hood that's versatile like this and is able to be adjusted kind of however you'd like. So another thing to mention about this lens that I really, really am excited about and love is this different stages of a locking mechanism. So it's pretty typical and standard that most lenses nowadays will have a lock function in which when it's zoomed out at the widest or the tightest, you can find a lock function in which the lens will no longer move. But what's really cool and unique about this lens is that it also has a soft and a tight function. 
at the soft function, it moves very normally, right? And also it's a push-pull lens as well as a rotating lens, so I really appreciate that fact. But at the soft end, it'll move really nice and easy and is very convenient for if you're just wanting to very quickly zoom in and out of things. But they also have a tight feature, which makes it a lot more stiff and to where you can still move it with a little bit of effort. But the cool thing about it is it won't lens creep. So if you're, if you're up shooting upwards, then you're able to not worry about that lens creep still as you're shooting, but you're able to move it if you need to. So I really, really enjoy that aspect of this lens. And I think it's super clever, super intuitive and creative about this lens. This lens is also weatherproof, which is pretty important in wildlife photography. Sometimes with my old Sigma contemporary lens, I never really experienced problems with it being um, weatherproof or not out in the rain, but it's always nice to have that extra kind of backup and reliability in your lens to be able to count on that. Now the last little feature that I really love about this lens is this fine attention to details. With the mounting ring, it's super, super intuitive and creative because not only is it um, this little knob here in which you can just very easily and buttery smooth slide this mounting ring around to portrait in the landscape, but it snaps into these positions very nicely. So you don't have to worry about leveling it, getting it perfectly level as you orient your positioning with the camera. But beyond this about the mounting ring, what I think is even more creative is that they put an Arca Swiss mount already attached on this mounting plate. So no longer do you need a plate to be attached to that's Arca Swiss and then to mount it to a tripod. But for example, with my gimbal head that I use, it's an Arca Swiss mount and I can just directly mount this camera to the tripod. I don't need a plate between it and I don't have to worry about tightening on a plate, worry about it slipping off, stuff like that. But rather I just put this lens directly onto the tripod and it just mounts on there directly, which is amazing and I can't tell you how convenient that makes it for someone who uses a tripod. So now let's dive into some of the bigger, more key features of lens selection when you're selecting a lens. First of all, this is a 600 millimeter full frame focal equivalent, which if you do bird photography specifically is hugely important. If you're a bird photographer, you know the difference between having just 400 millimeters of reach and 600 millimeters. That 600 millimeters will get you a lot more intimate and engaged with your subjects. It's important sometimes to have that 600 millimeters to get really nice up and close with your subjects. So I really appreciate the 600 millimeter aspect of this lens and is a huge selling point for me as a wildlife photographer and bird photographer more specifically. Now, the autofocus seems very snappy as well. It seems very snappy, very quick, although I'm not an autofocus shooter myself, so for me, it's more important to have a good, buttery smooth manual focus ring. And this manual focus ring is nice and smooth. There's no hiccups in it whatsoever. It feels very solidly built. The whole lens is a sports line lens in total, and so it feels very solidly and sturdy built. And so I've really appreciated the build quality of this lens, and it feels very professional as a whole. Now next and most importantly of all is the image quality and sharpness of this lens. Without that, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters more in a lens, and if I had to substitute everything else, this would be the thing that I would focus on most for the price. Now, when I did some tests on my, in my backyard against the brick wall in my backyard, I was really, really excited about the sharpness of this lens and how nicely it turned out. I compared it against my old 150 to 600 millimeter contemporary lens, which I've loved my experience with as well and is my favorite wildlife photography lens. And this lens undoubtedly beat it out in terms of sharpness. It was so clear and so detailed in the images. In these examples, you can see the sharpness laid out against the brick wall, but also I did another test where you can kind of see the bokeh. The bokeh looks pretty similar between these two. However, I do have to say the bokeh in this lens feels a little bit more circular and a little bit more clean and smooth than the older version, the contemporary 150 to 600 millimeters. In regards to chromatic aberration, I really didn't notice any when I was out shooting in the field. I used it in a few scenarios intentionally to see See if there was much chromatic aberration as I shot against really overexposed backgrounds, stuff like that, and I really didn't notice anything whatsoever, which was really cool and a really big aspect about getting lens image quality right because bad chromatic aberration just ruins a lens in my opinion. Now lastly, let's talk about the disadvantages of this camera because in my opinion there was really only two things that stand out to me. One is gonna be the weight of this camera. Although it is incredibly impressive compared to the old sports version 150 to 600 millimeters of this lens, it is much lighter. It is a whole two pounds lighter than the old sports version of this lens, which is a lot of weight to knock off. 
So with that being said, the weight is definitely manageable. It's not like the other lens where it felt like you needed a tripod to be able to shoot that. However, it still is quite a bit. I believe it comes in at about 4.7 pounds and it's, it's a decently heavy camera. When I was out shooting and testing out this camera for part of the day handheld, I definitely felt it as I was holding it up to the sky, shooting different types of subjects. I definitely felt the fatigue in my arms after a while. So it is something to be noticed and to be aware of because even though it is slightly heavy, it's actually only about a half a pound heavier than the 150 to 600 millimeter contemporary. So with all being said, for the amount of quality that you get out of this, I'd much rather take the half pound of weight additional over the quality of the contemporary version of this lens. And the other downside to this lens is that it is a 6.3 minimum aperture, which again, isn't the worst. It's by far not the worst out there, but it is something to be aware of that you're not gonna get extremely low light in your shots. However, if you're looking for any telephoto lens in any, any type of mount, any type of camera system, you will not find something lower than 6.3 with having the same full frame focal equivalent as this. It is literally impossible until you spend $5,000 plus. So at this price, it's to be completely expected that the aperture only goes as low as it does. And something else that was actually a pro about this was that at 6.3, it shot very sharply. Whereas a lot of lenses, when they're fully zoomed in at their minimum apertures, lose a good amount of detail and sharpness in their image quality. And I didn't feel like that was the case at all with this lens. So without further ado, why is this the best wildlife photography lens for L-mount? Well, for L-mount, it's very obvious. It is the first 600 millimeters in its range. There's really only one other competitor with it, which is the 100 to 400 millimeters, which comes in at virtually almost the same price, yet this one is so much better in my opinion in a lot of different ways. So in the L mount comparison, it really beats out the competition. Now in the E mount, the biggest competitor that it has is the Sony 200 to 600 millimeters. Now I feel like this lens beats it out in a couple of ways. First of all, the features are way more up to date and modern and creative than the Sony 200 to 600 millimeters. Something such as the image stabilization is better on this lens than the Sony, or something as modern as the mounting ring is very, very helpful with this lens as compared to the Sony. Now beyond that, the image sharpness of these two lenses feels almost identical between the two. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get a 200 to 600 millimeter from Sony. However, from the reviews that I've seen comparing these two different sharpnesses and the files that I've compared, they seem to be very, very similar in their image sharpness. However, this is really the kicker where it is. This lens is $500 cheaper than the Sony version. So essentially, you're getting the same reach, you're getting the same sharpness, and you're getting better features than the Sony 200 to 600 millimeters for $500 less. So with all that being said, I believe that this is the best E-mount lens out there for wildlife photographers in the sub $2,000 range. And for L-mount photographers, it's a no-brainer. So I hope you guys enjoyed the review. If you guys are interested in checking out the product, make sure to check it out in my affiliate link in the description below. I know for myself that I will be purchasing this lens eventually because it is an amazing no-brainer solution for my lens and it's nothing but an upgrade for an affordable price in wildlife photography. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to subscribe below if you enjoyed it, want to see more stuff like this, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next one.